Hey guys, what's going on? It is Dr. D here from One Hive Invicta, um, bringing you the, a, a recent war recap um, from uh, a very interesting event that Invicta participated in. So many of you have heard me say this before, but I am not a fan of farm wars. Uh, they take three days of my time for a war that is just no fun to be in. Um, but the people over at um, FFW have come up with a solution, and so the doctor is in today, and I have got your prescription for the Farm War Blues. And that is the F Farm War. <laughs> so if you uh, look onto Twitter, you can go to F, at F Farm Wars and check this out. But this event is um, an event in which they actually broke this up into two different events, uh, a 40 v 40 uh, Town Hall 9 event and then a 10 and 11 Town Hall event uh, that was separate um, where they did not allow dip. So we had some rules uh, for the um, 40 v 40 people signed up for this or different clans signed up for this and uh, for this particular event the, the main rule was no use of bowlers so lots of old school attacks and that meant I had a tough time uh, settling on the attacks that we're going to show today because there were so many really, really great um, attacks and, and a, lot of, um, a lot of attacks that took a lot of thought and a lot of planning, which, I mean, um, nothing against bowlers, but uh, you can kind of spam them in, throw a rage on them, and clear out half a base. And so this, this reminded me of the way that things were, you know, six months ago before, before the bowler craze started coming. Um, at any rate, uh, without any further ado, let's get into the attacks. So, our, um, our match in the FFW wound up being Knights Templar. And uh, props to these guys, they, they, they put up a very good fight, they had some very tough bases. I'm going to be honest, I ward Knights Templar uh, about three months ago when I was with War Road. And you can catch a war recap of that war on Knights Templar um, YouTube page. And I'll put a link to their page in our description. Go and check it out, subscribe, and check this clan out. I think this is a really, really good clan. Um, they've got some great attacks and some very, very knowledgeable guys over there. Um, at any rate, uh, they beat us when I was in War Road, 70 to 71. So I was looking for some revenge, and we wound up getting that revenge here. So if we um, have a look at the uh, map, you'll see these are all Town Hall 9s. Um, they left, you know, a, a few of our lower nines open. Um, we, though, also had open nines, of course. Um, so far, I think I've only seen one FFW clan post a perfect 120, um, and that was War Whales, who had combined with Dark Looters, I believe. Uh, here's the statistics. We had 27 three-stars to their 18 three-stars. They did not use their last attack. At, the, at this point, actually, it, it didn't matter, and so... All right, let's talk about six packs because um, on our side we only had four. Uh, that that says something because we we actually combined with 2.0, who have, in in my opinion, is some of the best town hall nines in the game. Um, and so uh, some of the 2.0 town hall nines came over to Invicta, and some of the Invicta uh, town hall tens and elevens went to 2.0 to do the other half of the FFW. And we even brought some swarm folks over uh, to participate in this war. Um, at any rate, uh, if we're scrolling through here, um, DH, who is a 2.0 regular and just a monster, uh, six pack, uh, one fresh triple. Then if we scroll down, Kriya, who is also a 2.0. There we go. Um, six pack. And sports buff. Number 27, uh, six pack with one fresh triple, and heartless, two fresh triples, very impressive. Um, all right, let's go ahead and check out some of these uh, recaps. We're going to start at the bottom here, and I've tried to pick some kind of unique, uh, unique attacks and unique plans. Uh, one thing that was really cool about all of this is, as I said before, no bowlers. Uh, we did allow miners. Um, and so I'm going to show a couple of attacks that use miners, which I thought I thought that they worked out beautifully. But let's start with Lee. And so if you look at this base, right, there's basically no spots for 
double giant bombs. And so we are coming in just with a shattered Goho. Uh, this base had been hit twice. Lee knew where at least one of the giant bombs were. And this is, this is perhaps a new meta that's coming, but giant bombs were all outside of the base on this one. Um, at any rate, uh, shattered entry comes in. Um, and he's got those, those two, uh, two golems tanking. Jump spell down. King is in. Giant starts coming in with the sole purpose of tripping that bomb. There it goes. Queen is going to take out that king over there. And then the hogs just start pouring in. Uh, notice that he did not use kings for tanking at all. He didn't need to. Um, he knew that uh, he could just force feed these hogs all the way around. Um, when you, just just as a side note, when you have um, defenses that are clumped together like that, uh, it's actually um, really not the most effective use of spring traps. You might catch one or two hogs, and I think he's, he maybe loses five hogs total on all of these spring traps. So that is not bad at all. At any rate, here they come. Uh, could have probably dropped a poison spell on those skellies a little bit earlier. Definitely could have. <laughs> At any rate, that is it. It is GG. Three stars in the bag. Nice job, Lee. All right. Next, we are going to look at DH. Here to number 25. So DH, this is a this is a very cool attack. Um, up against Lil Mac. Lil Mac is uh, he's a former One Hive member. He used to be an Invicta with me. Um, took a jump over to uh, Knights Templar. Um, at any rate, uh, base held up pretty well. I believe this is maybe the second or third attack. But uh, DH comes in with a Queen Walk and. I think he was maybe trying to force that queen down that alley. Those, those alleys actually make for great value with uh, queen walks, um, especially if it's full of uh, point defenses that you can get. And there's a few point defenses down there. I think that there might, have, there might actually be um, uh, Teslas in there. But at any rate, uh, sends in the Valks, who uh, rip through that wall, destroy, all, oh, the, uh, destroy a whole row of Teslas. Never mind, there aren't Teslas in there. Um, Valks go in. Queen, and you'll notice he still has not used that CC. Just sending this one hog around, a couple of more hogs, just trickling things in. There comes the CC. So he's cleared out about half of the base, and now the miners come in to start working their way around. So we're going to speed this up just a little bit here. Heal spell goes down. To be honest, probably not even needed, but uh, just rocking this base. There it goes. Um, miners beating away. And this is all but over with. Nice job, DH. Okay, um, next we are going to look at 21. 21 was my favorite attack. Not necessarily because it was the, the best attack, but I was I was on um, DC and I was helping McGrady plan this. And it, it, don't get me wrong, it was a very, very good attack. Um, we were going through all kinds of different scenarios. Uh, finally, uh, Kadak hopped on, and man, that guy just knows this game so well. Um, and, and he walked through a um, or, or helped McGrady plan out this attack. The reason that this is my favorite attack is actually because um, this attack right here cinched the win. Um, when uh, McGrady triples this base, um, it was one of the last hits, and it meant that we could not be caught at that point. So, of course, everybody loves to see those attacks. Everybody loves to have the um, things play out that way. But at any rate, uh, Queen Walk is in there doing all kinds of damage, finally pulls that CC out. Uh, another rage goes down for the queen. That's the second rage that he's used on her. Oh no, that's the first rage. I'm sorry. Ah, sorry about that. We just had a hurricane in Florida, and I've got notifications on. Um, at any rate, uh, 
In goes the two golems. This funnel is set. And you'll notice it's the same sort of deal uh, when it comes to uh, what's going to happen with these miners. He is uh, trying to set up and clear as much of this bottom corner, bottom half of the base as possible. Um, need to get the king in there. There he goes. And now that the king is in, miners go in, and it is kind of a straight shot for some of these heavy point defenses. Well, I guess that those miners kind of took off on their own uh, working their way up around, but that's okay. Um, hogs start trickling in, surgical style. He's got one bomb that he knew where it was, uh, that one there. Another one that he knew where it was, where the, the double bombs are by the king, but we're still missing a bomb and we're not sure where it was. And McGrady had a feeling it was right there and sure enough it was. Uh, it's okay, he loses a huge batch of hogs right there, but miners are right there. They're gonna take out that wizard tower and that's it, it is basically game over. Um, got a couple of point defenses down here on the bottom. They're going to get cleaned up by miners and the king. And that finished it off for us. Three stars in the bag. Nice job, McGrady. What do we have next? Priya. Uh, so while McGrady's attack was my favorite attack, only because it sealed the win, Priya's attack is maybe the coolest attack of the war. So... Pause it real quick and just look at this army composition. Pekka, there's another Pekka in the clan castle. Two golems. So we're talking like some sort of a weird queen walk, go wipe type of deal here. Um, just watch this plan as it comes together because it is so cool. So we start out with a queen walk. Only three healers. Uh, you can get by with three healers oftentimes if you know that you're not going to be facing more than two point defenses and you've got um, usually a rage to help push through some of that stuff. There comes the third point defense, and it will hurt you quickly if you don't get that rage down. Um, but uh, three point defense is gone. Pretty soon to be five point defense is gone, plus that uh, air defense is down. If you can get five point defenses with the queen walk, you are doing pretty good. Um, usually my goal for a queen walk is to get six or seven point defenses. Uh, that was actually the sixth right there with that... Um, <clears throat> wizard tower or I mean uh, archer tower so uh, queen goes in um, two uh, pekkas go in and the bk goes in poison the cc uh, jump into the center here and now hogs down on the back end with a giant to tank for them and there is three more point defenses I mean this uh, this, uh, this attack is just so well executed and so well thought out. Uh, jump goes down um, to pull those uh, heavy hitters over into the queen chamber. Uh, unfortunately, spring trap there, you lose a bunch of hogs and two hogs is just not enough to finish off an expo that has a lot of HP. But it doesn't matter. You've got some balloons on the back end here. And uh, finally, we've got uh, that Pekka working on that final expo there. And Loon's working up towards the top. Queen is still up with just her three healers. Uh, Pekka's are banging away on everything. And that is, uh, that is it. It is GG, three stars in the bag. Nice job, Kriya. Okay, next we have Blonde. This is I Blonde, haha, -ha. and she is going in on number 15. Um, so uh, I Blonde is actually new to Invictus. She's in Swarm. She actually wasn't in Swarm for that long because she is just a monster attacker. But she's bringing a Vabby here. So the goal, right, with this Vabby is to create a, uh, a nice path or cut, cut a very nice funnel with a couple of uh, baby drags, bring in a ton of... Valkyries and ideally jump them straight through to get to all of the air defenses. Now that first jump probably could have been better placed. Uh, if, if that first jump goes 
right over the, um, right at that uh, spot where those two air defenses overlap, then she probably gets two air defenses right off the bat. But you can see um, she's down here, she's ripping away. There's still several Valkyries up. Finally, that second air defense goes down, but watching this, it was like, man, is that air defense ever gonna go down? Now, here's the problem. We've got two air defenses that are both um, locked within walls. You can't get to them. And a whole bunch of baby dragons left, five. So we've got to be able to get to these air defenses. Fortunately, um, the king starts banging away on a wall there. And that queen, with just a sliver of health, starts working on that expo. King gets through. We have one Valkyrie left. She starts spinning. And down goes the final air defense. And we've got four swag baby dragons. Uh, very nice job, though. Awesome attack. I've seen this done by Heartless, and, and it's, a, it's a very cool attack. So, all right, and welcome, welcome to Invicta Blonde. And we have one more attack that I want to show today. Um, this is Rob. And I think that this is just a really, really cool attack. So this is going to be a queen walk drag attack. And dragons are so back at Town Hall 9. Um, I, you see many, many of the guys in, in uh, 2.0, like I said, who are some of the, the best Town Hall 9s in the game right now, uh, are, are starting to use dragons pretty consistently. Um, Rob is one of them. Uh, Val is one of them. But yeah, you see some great dragon attacks. Uh, the goal here is we've got outside air defenses and if you're gonna wiser has talked about this in some of his videos if you're gonna put outside air defenses like this you're opening yourself up to dragon attacks even even setting the expos to air um, it can be it can be very problematic Whew, man look at that health on her just barely but he's at the point now where he knows he's going to um, push through this finally all of these Goblins come pouring out, Big Dragon comes pouring out, pops the ability, gets the Baby Dragon, and he is going to, we'll speed this up just a little bit, work around here and get that final air defense. Uh, drops the King on the top up here, and then Zap Quakes, an air defense, and an Archer Tower. Um, if you can get two defenses with that, you're always better off. So, uh, King is tanking, throws down some hogs. Uh, hogs come out. Notice in his CC was a baby dragon and a max dragon. Um, and he brings them from two different angles, right? So, baby dragon, max dragon are coming in from the top. And then he starts this full force of dragons from the bottom. Uh, a little bit of rage to get them going right off the bat. And... It's got an expo on ground. It's not going to hurt a thing. It's just going to shoot at that king. And at this point, it doesn't matter all that much. Speed this up just a little bit. Look at all of these dragons left. A couple of blowers. Doesn't matter. And at this point, you know, he's got really one defense that can do anything to those dragons. And that's just the expo. Um, those uh, wizard towers, just not, not a ton of damage to dragons. And that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Rob. So, um, like I said, great war, really had fun. I'm glad that we were able to get some revenge against these guys, at least uh, from my old days at War Road. Um, and maybe we can, uh, w with, with the new announcements today of, of um, new uh, friendly challenge wars, maybe we can set something up with these guys sometime in the future. But. At any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For those that participated in the um, FFW event, I hope you guys liked the event. I found it to be one of the most fun events that I've done um, in Clash of Clans in a while. It ranks right up there with the potlucks. Uh, for those who didn't participate, I encourage you to check out the Twitter page and follow these guys so that you're able to get in on the next event. Lots of fun. Uh, until next time, guys, this is Dr. D from One Hive Invicta. Take care.